this adorable little meme icon recently got a poison type regional variant. So let's see what a whooper of every type might look like. Hey everyone, Brandon here. So on August 3rd, 2022, the internet was introduced to the incredible Paldean Whooper. And on that day, everything changed. So that led me to creating 16 more Whoopers to fill the remaining types. We have Water Ground with the original Whooper and then Poison Ground with Paldean Whooper. So all these Whoopers will have the secondary ground typing as well. I worked with these two incredible artists to bring these variants to life. So make sure to check them out in the description. And let's get to some Whoopers, shall we? Starting us off is the fairy type. One very specific whooper came to mind when I thought of a fairy type whooper. The special heart marked whooper owned by Alicia in the anime. Hearts and love are great aspects that could be incorporated into a fairy type. So I dug a little deeper for inspirations and found the leucistic axolotl. It is light and dark pink in coloration, which ties perfectly into the hearts and love theme I had in mind. So put them together and you get this whooper. Like Paldean Whooper, I tried to make it so the same four things changed on each of these variants. The color, its mouth shape, the pattern on its chest slash stomach, and Whooper's gills. Yes, those things on the side of the heads of axolotls and larval salamanders are actually external gills, which are what the little protrusions on Whooper's head are meant to emulate. Anyway, the gills and pattern on the chest have been changed to love hearts, not biological hearts, because that would be really terrifying. I imagine the heart whooper Alicia owned was an ancestor to this whooper and was essentially the first to develop the heart gene. This whooper developed the fairy typing through domestication. Domesticated whooper with the heart gene became a highly desirable commodity. The more whooper were bred to have it, which eventually led to other parts of its biology changing, such as its gills and type. If the colors of the hearts on this whooper's head and chest are brighter, it means it's very happy and feels loved. But if not, the hearts will begin to turn dark purple and can even break. Next up, we have the fighting type. This one was a bit tough because how do you make a fighting type that has no arms? Literally every fighting type has arms of some kind. I mean, Whooper having no arms didn't stop Game Freak from letting it learn Ice Punch, so I wasn't going to let this stop me. But then I came across this fantastic artwork by Utagawa Kuniyoshi called Samurai Fighting Giant Salamander. This ukiyo-e style painting inspired me and made me think, why not just mix them? Which led to the creation of this Whooper. The gills of this whooper are meant to emulate a samurai's helmet, specifically the Fukugaeshi and the Shikoro, which protect the face and the head of the samurai. The pattern on its chest is meant to replicate the kuris, or do, of a samurai armor, which typically have some sort of lined pattern on the chest. This whooper has a strong sense of justice and courage. It will defend itself and others without wavering. It always acts with honor, honesty, and politeness to every Pokemon it meets. Trainers who use this Pokemon are said to be as powerful as they are loyal. Next is the normal type, so here we have this whooper. Does it look familiar? It should. This Wooper is an ancient ancestor to both Wooper and Chansey. My buddy Alex suggested this and I loved the idea, so I rolled with it. Chansey's ears or gills have always seemed like an odd feature for it to have, especially when compared to Hapini and Blissey, so this variant gives an explanation. Obviously, the gills are meant to reflect Chansey's gills, but also the pattern on its stomach emulates the Chansey line's egg pouches. This Pokemon was lost to the ages long ago, but its ancestors Wooper and Chansey still live on carrying on its legacy. It is said that if you rub the pattern on its stomach, good luck and happiness will be brought to you. Now for the ghost type. As always, this one's going to get a bit spooky. Actually though, this one is based on some things that are a bit creepy. Axolotls are frequently experimented on due to their incredible regenerative abilities. They can regenerate limbs, bones, or even portions of their brain. So here is our ghost type whooper. Its gills are now a ghostly miasma, which are a reference to the axolotl's limbs being experimentally removed, but also phantom limbs. The feeling that some amputees can have where they get the sensation that their missing limb is still there. The pattern on its chest, like Paldean whooper, is missing to emulate a rib cage, but unlike Paldean Whooper, it is more so meant to look like the ribs of a decaying zombie. This Whooper is the result of experimentation by Pokemon scientists, who are looking to discover the secrets of infinity energy. It is seen skulking around abandoned laboratories, trying to exact revenge on the scientists who made it this way. Moving on, we have the Psychic type. When looking at salamanders and axolotls for this video, I managed to come across the Lavender axolotl, which just felt perfect for a Psychic type. I also wanted to incorporate some aspects of 
divination and fortune telling. So here is this whooper. Rather than a pattern on its stomach, it has gained a third all-seeing eye, which in many religions and popular media gives one clairvoyance, precognition, or enlightenment. Its feathery gills covering its eyes refers to the claim that individuals who have lost one of their senses, such as blindness or deafness, have their other senses heightened. Also, the idea of not using your eyes to see, but opening your third eye to see the truth. It is also a reference to headscarves worn by the Romani or Roma people, who are known to practice divination and fortune telling. This Pokemon only sees using its third eye, which it uses to see all around it and feel Pokemon's auras. It is not known if it even has eyes underneath its gills, or if it just covers them out of instinct. Now for the dark type. For this, I wanted to go in less of an evil direction, because how could this adorable face be evil? So instead, I opted to go in more of an Umbreon direction and reference the moon and nighttime. Right after deciding that, I found out about the speckled black salamander. The pattern on its skin reminded me of a night sky and stars, so it matched up perfectly. So with all that in mind, here is our dark type whooper. Its gills are crescent moons, and the pattern on its stomach and tail are stars. This whooper has adapted to only coming out at night. Its moon-shaped gills can glow in the dark, drawing in bug type Pokemon for it to eat. Speaking of eating Bug-type Pokemon, let's talk about this Bug-type Wooper. This one is pretty simple. It's kind of a you-are-what-you-eat kind of thing, where this Wooper ate so many Bug-type Pokemon that it became one itself over time. And I mean, if Alolan Raichu can eat so many fluffy pancakes that it gains the psychic typing, this Wooper can do the same thing with bugs. Its design is mostly inspired by the Mole Cricket, but also its mouth is like Trap Inch, a ground type based on a ground-dwelling bug. The gills are meant to look like antennae, and the little nubs on the chest and stomach are meant to reflect the pattern on the back of the Mole Cricket's abdomen. This Wooper likes to pester other Pokemon by burrowing underground so it can't be found, and then proceeds to make very loud noises. It gets great joy from feeling the vibrations of other Pokemon trying to look for it to no avail. For the rock type, we have this whooper. Okay, I'm kind of proud of the pun here. This one is based on the marbled salamander, but it's literally a marble salamander. Its gills refer to the curly hair used in many marble sculptures, such as David or Venus de Milo, which I found especially funny given Venus de Milo doesn't have arms, and neither does whooper. The capital I-shaped pattern on its stomach is based on ionic columns found in Greek architecture, in which these kind of marble statues can be seen resting upon. And many Greek gods and heroes are the basis of these statues, which tie in with the Ionic Column's Greek origins. This Pokémon likes to pose dynamically to intimidate other Pokémon from attacking it. It is fairly fragile, so this is its best form of defense. Next up is the Flying type. So here is this Wooper. As you can no doubt tell, this one is a bit out there, but let me explain. This Wooper is based on the Wandering Salamander. These little daredevils like to sometimes skydive from redwood trees in Northern California. You know, some of the tallest trees on the planet? They can stretch their feet and tail to help them glide to the ground safely. This was such a wild phenomenon, I had to feature it. So that brings us to this Wooper. These parachute-like gills can actually be stored in the little white pouches on the side of Wooper's face, like an airbag. This artwork is just illustrating what they look like in action. The symbol on its stomach should be pretty recognizable, as it's the symbol found on landing pads, usually for helicopters, which people can skydive from if they're real thrill seekers. This Pokemon likes to climb up high into mountains or buildings, and then jumps from them so it can use its gills to glide high in the sky. Now for the electric type. Here it is. Since this whooper is an electric ground type, I thought, hey, why not reference electrical grounds? So the symbol on its chest is the icon for electrical grounds. The gills not only look like lightning bolts, but also reference the wires used to connect to an electrical ground. This Pokemon does something that no human should do, and uses its little fangs to bite into electrical wiring. Due to its typing, it can not only withstand the shock, but uses it to fuel itself. Like a little supercharged snack. If it gets caught snacking, it will bury itself in the ground to hide. While we're on the topic of the ground, let's talk about the pure ground type. I had a couple inspirations for this one, but primarily the Hellbender Salamander. This big guy is really good at camouflaging with the riverbed. Weirdly, that made me think of that one scene in Rambo 2 where he covers himself in mud to camouflage himself. So I kind of combined those ideas into this Wooper. I really wanted to avoid coming off as similar to Paldean Wooper since it's so brown and ground type looking already. So I used the more riverbed color of the Hellbender and covered it in a muddy camouflage like pattern. The gills are just meant to look muddy as well, but they also kind of look like Sylvester Stallone's wavy hair covered in mud? Kinda? Look, I know it's a stretch, okay? This whooper buries itself in the mud to hide from predators, but also to wait for prey to pass by so it can get a close-range strike. 
For the grass type, I found out a very interesting fact about the spotted salamander, which is just wild. It turns out when the spotted salamander lays its eggs, a photosynthetic algae called Uphyla amblistomatis grows on the eggs and shares a symbiotic relationship with them, eating the nitrogen waste the eggs create and then providing extra oxygenated water for the eggs. If you think that's cool, it gets even crazier. It was initially thought that the symbiotic relationship ended when these eggs hatched, but it has been discovered that the algae can be found in the cells of the salamander itself, making it the world's only known photosynthesizing vertebrate, which is absolutely insane. So here is our grass type pooper that references this. The green spots on its chest reflect the spots of the salamander it is inspired by, but also the shape of the spots refers to the pattern on pokey eggs, which connects back to the salamander's eggs relationship with the algae. Its gills are just meant to look like leafy appendages to further the idea of its grass typing. This Pokemon uses the special spots on its stomach to take in energy. It will also plant itself in the ground to rest, in which farmers will often mistake it for a crop and pull it up, awakening and angering this Pokemon. Next up is the Ice type. For this, we have yet another wacky salamander that it's based on, the Siberian Salamander. Like the well-known wood frog, this salamander can survive deep freezes, sometimes remaining frozen for months. But once it thaws, it can walk off like nothing happened. They were able to do this because they can somehow replace their blood with the chemicals of antifreeze. What? And I thought the last one was crazy. Anyway, here is our ice type whooper. Its gills are now icicles, and the pattern on its stomach references ice cube trays. The coloration plays off of the Siberian salamander, but it also has a pretty gnarly inspiration that I won't show on screen. But it refers to severe frostbite and how the skin can turn black. Look that up at your own peril. I will not be held responsible. It is said that this whooper came about when a group of them was forced from their home and pushed north to a harsh wintry land that it had to adapt to. Now for steel. I won't lie, I probably had the most trouble coming up with this one, until I found out about something in metallurgy also called a salamander. It is a mass of solidified iron iron removed from a blast furnace to prevent it from blocking the tap hole. The kind of iron that blast furnaces are typically used for is called pig iron, which is smelted to make steel. So here is our steel type whooper. The symbol on its stomach is a pig snout to reference the pig iron it is based on, and the gills are based on steel reinforcing bars, which are mainly used in construction. You can see them sticking out of concrete once it's been broken. This whooper is known for its distinct ability to withstand heat. It loves to drink molten iron and even take baths in it. Speaking of heat, it's time for the fire type. This is another pretty simple one. I went with the mythological creature of the salamander, which in many depictions is a fire elemental of sorts. So here is our fire type whooper. It has fiery gills and a fire pattern on its stomach, which is actually a pun and refers to the fire belly salamander. You could really say that this salamander has a fire in its belly. This Pokemon soaks up the intense heat of volcanoes and is even said to breathe fire. Fire breathing. Kind of like a dragon. Oh yeah, let's talk about the dragon type. So for this, I went in a similar vein to the Dragon Oracorio in that of every type video, where the dragon typing is displayed through a large looming presence. Well, what has a large presence? How about a king or an emperor? Well, there is the Emperor Newt, but this little guy doesn't really have a big presence. What if we mixed it with a bigger salamander? No, how about the biggest salamander? And the biggest of them all is the Chinese giant salamander. So put all these concepts together and we get this whooper. As you can see, it is a bit more busy design-wise than the others, but that is because it is the King Whooper. And it is huge, even bigger than a Quagsire. It is partly inspired by King bob -omb from the Super Mario franchise. It has its crown and even its royal attire. The pattern on its chest references the toxic bulbs of the Emperor Newt, but also looks like the military uniforms worn by royalty. Its relationship to other whoopers, I imagine, is like the Alpha Dragon in How to Train Your Dragon, where no matter the species, this King Whooper commands them all. Let me know which of these whoopers was your favorite. Thanks for watching, and with that, I will see you guys next time.